Hello, welcome to the fourth episode of Object Oriented Programming in PeopleSoft. My name is Siva Koya. Today, in this episode, let's understand what polymorphism is with a hands on exercise. Before I jump in, a quick recap of my previous episode. In my previous episode, we saw how we can extend the functionality of our PeopleSoft application using inheritance. One of the core concepts that we learned as part of inheritance is child class inherits properties and methods of the parent class. This forms the basis for polymorphism. So what exactly is polymorphism? The method you are invoking is not decided based on the type of reference on which you call the method, but based on the type of the object or instance referred at the runtime. I know it sounds complicated. Let me break it down for you. For example, we have a vehicle class. We extended vehicle class through inheritance and we came up with a car class and a truck class, which means wherever an instance of vehicle is passed in your code, you can pass an instance of car or an instance of truck. That's the power of inheritance child class got full access of parent class and can do something more. Let's assume we have a drive method in all the three classes, but it is implemented differently as shown here. When you pass an instance of car where instance of vehicle is referenced in your code, it will execute the drive method of the car, not vehicle. Likewise, if you pass the instance of truck, where instance of vehicle is referenced, system will execute the drive method implemented inside truck class, not vehicle at the runtime. This is nothing but polymorphism. Poly means many, morphism means forms, many forms of the same method. If it is still more confusing, let's do a hands-on exercise. All right. Let's keep going. What I will do is I'll start with the requirement and then show you how we can accomplish the task using polymorphism. Deal? Let's get started. What I have here is a simple PeopleSoft page used by a bank, mainly used by customers to calculate how much money they can make if they invest in this bank. For example, if a customer plans to deposit $5,000 for a period of four years, as you can see on the label, if they invest in checkings account, the current rate of return is 4%. If they plan to invest in savings account, the current rate of interest is 6%. If they click on this button, it should calculate the total amount that he will take home at the end of four years if he invests in checkings account. Likewise, if the customer clicks on the savings account returns button, it should calculate the rate of return at 6% and display the result here. Now I'll go back to the drawing board and show you how I plan to design solution for this problem. Let me give you a quick overview of what we are going to do in the next few minutes. First, we are going to create a class called account, which is a base or parent class for checkings and savings account classes that we will create later. Then I'm going to create driver class for our logic, which is called bank, which contains calculator method. Calculator method takes account as input and returns the calculated value. Next, we are going to create two separate classes derived from our account class. As you have guessed, one is checkings account class and another is savings account class each one having their own method of calculating total returns. After that, without touching the core logic, we are going to pass an instance of checking account class in place of account. By doing that, system automatically execute calculate method defined inside checkings account. Likewise, when we pass an instance of savings account in place of account, system automatically kicks off calculate returns method defined inside savings account class. This is how I'm going to demonstrate polymorphism concept. Without any delay, let me go ahead and get started 
by heading back to my app designer. I will start by creating a new application package for this demo. Let's name it Poly Demo. Now I'll create a class called account to capture common attributes between check-ins and savings account. I'll go ahead and create a new class and let's name it account. I'll open it. Let's define our class. Usually there are many common attributes between check-ins and savings account, but let's focus on our calculation method in this demo. So let's define a common method called calculate total returns. and it will take in principal amount now let's go ahead and implement calculate total returns method since this is an abstract class we are not going to pull an instance of account method in my logic let's return the principal amount and we will not consider any interest for this specific implementation Let me go ahead and save our account class. Now let's go ahead and create two more classes that will extend our account class. One is checkings account class and another is savings account class. The way we are going to implement calculate total returns method is different between savings account class and checkings account class because both yield a different rate of interest. Let's go back to our application package and create new application class for our checkings account. I'll go ahead and save our new app class. Now I will navigate to our checkings account. I will go ahead and define our new class, which is checkings account, which I plan to extend from our generic account class. In order to extend, we need to start with the application package and use the class name that I plan to extend. And before I can use it, let's import this app package in class. And let me close our class. Let's use a constructor method. Constructor method would have the same name as the class. We use constructor method to instantiate our parent class so that we have full access to the properties and methods of the parent class. And now I am going to implement our constructor method. Here I plan to instantiate our super or parent class and I use the same path. Before that I need to use create keyword and this is how I instantiate parent class within child class so that I have full access to the methods and properties of the parent class. Now I will go ahead and save our changes. Just for kicks and giggles, let's not implement the method of calculate total returns inside our checkings accounts as we planned. Because I want to show you first how we can apply the methods of the parent class directly from our child class. So let me go ahead and create a new class called savings account and we follow the same approach. I'll go back to my application package. Now I'm going to create a new class called savings account. Click OK. Let me save it first. And now I will navigate to savings account. Let me paste the previous logic. I will change the class name to savings account. And let's use the same method as constructor method. I'll go ahead and save our changes. Our savings account class is ready now. Now it's time to write the driver class, which is bank. And it contains a method called calculator as we discussed before. Let me go ahead and quickly create a bank class. I will navigate back to our application package and I'm going to create a class. This is the driver class bank. I'll go ahead and save our application package and now I will navigate to bank class. Let's go ahead and define our bank class. Class bank and class. And this bank will have a method called calculator, method calculator. Like I said in the beginning, it will take three input parameters. The first one is account. This method is also going to take principal amount as an input parameter, as well as number of years. 
and it will return member. Let's go ahead and implement the calculator method. Before we proceed any further, let's import our app package and classes inside it. If you remember, a few minutes back, we have implemented calculate total returns inside our account class. Let me quickly show you that. Our application package inside this account. Remember, this is how we implemented calculate total returns method. Let me go ahead and copy our method. I'll navigate back to our bank class. Let's return the result of the calculation from our calculate total returns method in work from account class. Let me go ahead and save our driver class. Quick recap of what we have done so far. We started by creating a class called account and it has one method called calculate total returns and we are going to calculate returns based on the principal amount and years provided by the user. Then we have extended this account class through check-ins account and we are instantiating the parent class. We are yet to define calculate total returns for the check-ins account as well as for the savings account. Right now we are leveraging the calculation method that's defined in the account class to calculate the total returns. Then we have created the driver class which is bank class which contains only one method called calculator which takes account, principal amount and years as input and finally we are returning the calculated value by leveraging calculate total returns method implemented inside account class. This is what we have done so far. I will navigate to bank calculator page. Now it's time to write the core logic behind this calculate checking account returns button. So let's invoke our configuration in the field change event. In interest of time, I have pasted the code that I have written ahead of time. All I did was I have instantiated the bank class. I declared the variable and I have created an instance of bank class here. Likewise, I have declared checkings account and created an instance of checking account using create keyword. Then I have invoked the calculator method inside the bank class and passed the checkings account the principal amount that user entered on the page as well as the number of years and finally assigning the value to the result field. That's what I did here. Let's go ahead and test the logic that we have written so far. Here I am on our page. I will input the deposit amount as 5000. I will deposit my amount for four years. If I calculate as expected, we are seeing our principal amount in the result field value. Let's take a second and analyze our logic. For the calculator method, we are passing checkings account class in place of account. The only reason being because the checking account inherits all the methods and properties from this account class because we have used inheritance and extended this method through checkings account. And if you notice in our checkings account class, there is no calculate total returns method but checkings account got automatic access to the methods of its parent which is account class that's how calculate total returns method of account class got executed and returned the principal amount now let's go ahead and define calculate total returns method inside our checkings account class and see how our system behaves I will go ahead and define our calculate total returns method inside our checkings account and let's go ahead and implement the method. This time we will take 4% interest rate into consideration and return the total. Let me go ahead and save my changes. Let's go ahead and test the changes that we just did. I will go ahead and provide the same inputs 5000 four years and let me calculate returns now as expected system has taken four percent rate into consideration i mean system has invoked calculate total returns method that is defined inside the checkings account not from the account class that's what polymorphism is about 
basically we are not changing the interface of the core logic but we changed the behavior of the method all by implementing the same method inside child class overriding the logic that is defined in the parent class i hope you got at least some idea about the concept of polymorphism the key takeaway is if you want to enhance the functionality of people soft application leveraging polymorphism you have to perform three steps step 1 create a child class inheriting people soft delivered class step 2 override the implementation of people soft delivered method in your child class the way you want to change the behavior of our people soft application lastly pass your child class wherever people soft delivered class is passed in people code logic that's it from me for today guys i hope the content was helpful please share it will help others and subscribe if you want to follow more of my content Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.